Hello and welcome to another video. First of all, thanks very much for watching the previous Google Earth video and thanks very much for the feedback. In this video, I'm going to delve a little bit deeper and cover a huge range of things from importing a third person character, editing character movement parameters, cropping some of the geometry out, importing your own water plane, importing the ocean, bringing in photogrammetry scans, bringing in mega scans assets, bringing in assets from other asset packs, setting up cinematics correctly with curves and animating the camera and some post-process effects, and also looking at a dynamic sky as well. So there's a lot to get covered here. I would like to say thanks for pointing out at 5.17 that my API was uh, visible. A lot of you mentioned this. I spent a lot of time editing this and indeed it was visible, but that API expired ages ago, but thanks for the feedback. Secondly, I apologize about the quality of the audio. The quality of the audio varies massively between my videos. My microphone is budget and I try to make up for it by normalizing and putting some audio effects there and sometimes I get it wrong. So I will try to improve it in this video and hopefully it's better. Okay, the first thing I wanted to do was to get the third person character in the game. You can go to your content browser here. You can add a feature or content pack and a third person character. Now, some of you already probably know this, but if you want to start as the third person, you need to go into your world settings here and choose BP third person game mode. The other thing I did was delete the dynamic pawn at this stage. Then I would need to go into place actors here and find a player start and drag that into my level. Now, once I have that player start, I'm just going to focus in on it here. I should just be able to press play. I've put a little cube under here just to catch me while the geometry loads. And there I am walking on some really bad water in the awful financial district of London. But you will have collisions, so your character can actually jump up all of these gaps. And if you've got a nice mountainous terrain or something like that, you can play through this. And if you're finding out that you're not able to jump over anything like this, you can go into your character movement and start to tweak some of those settings. I'll really quickly show you how to do that. So if I just go into my content search for a third person character and just double click that, I can go into the components here and look at character movement and look at things like um, jump velocity, for example. I'm going to change that to 2100. And also you might want to change your walk speed as well, or implement a run. There's plenty of tutorials out there. But I'm going to change my max walk speed to 1500. Let's compile that, close this, and press play. Now I'm able to jump into this mess of polygons. Okay, with that out of the way, let's have a quick look at some of the other settings, yeah? Uh, so some of you were asking about cropping things out. I am just going to zoom on over my scene here, and I am going to go back into my cesium, and I'm going to bring in the cesium cartographic polygon here. I'm just going to focus on that by pressing F and see where that's come in. It's a 2.5D tool. Just a little bit of tweaking to get used to it, but you basically want to position this over your area. And in true cam style, I've lost my area. So I'm just going to get the, you may have to do this a lot, the location of my player start, copy these coordinates, put my, paste this into where my cartographic polygon is. Let me click that and press F to focus on that. There we go. So I'm just going to hold shift and bring this up a little bit. And then I can actually get these points and manipulate them to where I want them to go. You can also get the whole thing here and just scale it up. So once I have that, I want to crop this area. I can go into my cesium tile set. And here I can go to add and search for polygon here. And cesium polygon raster overlay is what I'm looking for. The next thing I'll want to do here is just to click add here and choose my cesium polygon for this and you'll see that it's inverted which is pretty cool you could fire in your own landscape here your own city map or something like that but I'm going to invert selection and just click where it says exclude selected tiles there and there I have my cropped version of my maps okay let's have a quick look at some other settings now I have some fog here which I used in my cinematic for the previous one. If we just search for fog here, this is an exponential height fog. You can grab this into the scene and you can start tweaking around with some of the settings in here. So I'm just gonna go to exponential height fog. The height is one of the things you might wanna play with, the fog density, um, the fall off, the scattering color, and the start distance and 
a cutoff distance or common parameters to tweak in this. I'm not going to cover this too much because there's some far better tutorials in the fog. Now let's go back to our cesium tile set again and just show you a few other things that you can tweak. Some of you are asking about loading stuff in and there is a few parameters that I've played with here which should enable you to get some better performance out of this. Maximum simultaneous tiles. Uh, you can play around with these numbers, cached bytes and loading descendant limit. Now I start tweaking with these and unfortunately my API, because it wasn't restricted, uh, exceeded its quota and I had to generate a new API. So just be careful. Do play around with these settings and see what works best for you. Now some of the other things I've discovered here is under materials. Here you can actually change the material of the asset entirely. Let's very quickly create just a very basic red material. Save that off, put it in there, and let's see what happens. And there we have this. Certainly makes it look a little more interesting. Okay, revert back to the uh, Google Earth material. There is a setting for water material here, but I could not get this to work. As I couldn't get it to work, I decided to start to bring in some of my own assets to try to make this a little better. So I went to the marketplace, Twin Motion Boats. This is only compatible with version 5.0, so you'll have to migrate from a 5.0 project. Automotive Bridge, and also this Brushify Arctic Pack as well. Sometimes just going through your vault and finding interesting stuff is one of the pleasures of using Unreal. You just need a lot of disk space and a good internet connection to download some of these assets. I'm only using the Arctic pack for the water material. You can create this yourself by using many tutorials out there. Let's see if we can get a little bit of water in here then. So what I would do is go into place actors here. And again, there probably is better ways of doing this. It wouldn't surprise me if tutorials are out there already showing a better way to do this. I've got my plane in there. I'm just going to scale this up to say 5,000. I'm going to lift this plane ever so slightly there so it's out of the water. Now with the Brushify pack in there I can just change this material to a ocean, ocean instance and I just lift that off the floor slightly. So it's starting to look a little bit more like water there. I can see the Google Maps terrain from under there so I might just lift this plane up ever so slightly. Got to be careful I'm not flooding this part of London. Could flood it, that would look pretty cool. But let's not go there. I get a few bankers upset. I'm gonna have it to about there. Let's just see how that looks. That's probably okay for what I'm doing. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Now we'll go in and get some of those boats and replace some of the geometry here that's Probably a little bit twisted up here, so I'm just going to go in here and see if I can grab a a yacht out of here. And that is a big boat. Let's bring that over there and see if we can replace that geometry which was there from Google. Maybe scale it up a little bit. We'll scale that up to 1.2. And we should continue to do that for some of these other boats. Right, let's see what's in this other pack now, in the automotive bridge scene. And these concrete walls could do quite nicely. And now for a bit of foliage. And I'm gonna add these mega scans black alder trees. I seriously doubt you'll find these in the city district of London, but they're definitely better than the Google trees. I could just fill in these unsightly gaps with some trees. Now that's not looking too bad for a very quick edit. Okay, another thing that we can look at here, some of you actually brought this up uh, because I've started from a blank template. I'm using the directional light here and I'm not using the 
CZM Sun Sky. So if I take my directional light here and start rotating it, you'll notice that the lighting on these buildings is not changing, which is very unrealistic. So again, if I go to that CZM tile and just search for lit here and click this, ignore a KHR material, you will see that this the tile now is affected by the lighting in my scene. So if I just put in my directional light again here and start to rotate, you'll see the shadows falling there, which is a lot more realistic. Okay, now for the cinematic. The way I do this is to first go into place actors to create a cine camera actor. Let's put that down there somewhere. What we will do is change this view to the camera put this into position where we want it to be. Now I have this button checked and when I do this I can control the camera with the WASD keys. Now for the camera itself I'm going to change some parameters. I'm going to put on a 24 millimeter lens. I might put a bit of motion blur on there as well. The other thing you can do here is to add a post-process volume. And in that post-process volume, you can go to unbound, and that means it'll affect everything. You just search for unbound in there. And here you can start to add some kind of color grading, depth of field, anything you want. I'm not going to go into this too much, but you can certainly get a bit artistic with this and start to grade the scene in a little bit. I'll show you quickly with the temperature there. Maybe some film settings here as well. Now I think that's about right there. What we can do here is to create a new sequence from here. So I'm just going to add a level sequence. And from here I can just tr click track. I have to have my cine camera selected. And click track there and add that to my sequence and start to keyframe this. The other thing I might want to do here is just to eject this and lock this view into place. So what I want to do is just sweep that down there and maybe choose a few more frames here. I'll go for 350. Grab this, pull this out here and I'm going to bring this, start to keyframe this camera. So what I want to do here is go into this camera and click the track button there and click a transform. From the transform I'll press enter to put a keyframe in there at the beginning. And I'll go down to the end there and position this camera where I want it to be. You can use WASD here, you can use the controls here, the location controls, whatever method you want. I'm just going to go in here and just bring it into view. When I'm done, I'll just press enter to mark that keyframe there. So after putting a bit too much in the scene, I had a few crashes, but I managed to recreate the sequence. One thing to point out is to show the curves in the editor if you want to get a nice smooth transition. I'm just going to lock the camera to the, with this button again and just show you quickly how I've done this. So if you go into the location and rotation curves, you can actually choose the type of curve you want for each one. I this is, this is a bit of a fine art. You can spend a very long time on this. Some of them, these I've chosen as linear. Some of them, like the rotation, I've chosen as a more smooth transition. It's completely up to you how you do this. This still isn't perfect, but it's just to show you that the option's there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to add some motion to some of these boats in the scene. To this, I can add pretty much everything. So once I've clicked that, I'm going to add this yacht here. And I'm also going to add this yacht and I'm going to start to keyframe this. So at the start of my sequence, this yacht is going to be there. And again, I can add a transform to this and transform it the same as anything else. I did have to restructure a few things in my scene and it 
as it crashed on me, I don't think I got as good a shot the second time round. But as I say, you can pretty much keyframe everything in this and really take your time and make it look a lot more special than what I've done here. Just a few quick tips on the render itself. I use the render queue, and if that's not there by default, go into your plugins and ensure movie render queue, or if you really want to go to work with the render, movie render queue additional render pass is enabled. So with the render queue activated, if I want to render out a render here, in these settings here, I can click on there and I usually have PNG sequence here instead of JPEG. You could put on some anti-aliasing. You can look at some various tutorials on what settings to use for this. Override anti-aliasing maybe. 1 over 8 or 1 over 16, something like that. And for the output, I chose 4K. Once that's done, you can just click Accept and Render Local to render out some frames. One more thing to show you here quickly. And what I've done here is I've put in my Cesium Sun Sky again and removed any other lights. And what I'm going to do with this is just to show you how to do a day to night cycle from the sequencer. You can do this on Blueprint and there's some really good tutorials out there. And you could potentially trigger an event from here or you could just press play and watch the time lapse. But what I'm going to do is just do it from the sequencer here. So for this, in the Cesium 3D tile, I have checked this box, ignore KHR material again to get the shadows in. So for this, I've added the Cesium Sun Sky to my sequencer. And from here, I've gone into track directional light. Track transform. What I'm going to do here is just to keyframe this pitch. So I go to the beginning here. Start off with zero and then put that in its keyframe. And at the end, I'm just going to put minus 180 for this. Keyframe that as well. And watch the sun and sky change there. Not in time with the boat, so very unrealistic, but you get the idea. Here I've brought in a photogrammetry scan that I made of a Grain Tower in Kent that you can see in this video here. and 15 million polygon mesh nanite, just dragged it in, used the water plugin to create a more wider area of water. You could combine this with foam or something like that to get even better, more realistic seas. And I've used this amazing plugin, Ultra Dynamic Sky. And here I am automating the time of day again, and also weather effects and stuff, which can all be controlled via Blueprint. So I will do more on this in another video, perhaps do an advanced video after this. And thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.